There are certain laws of life that are just beyond question, beyond being challenged. Consider a few with me. For example, there is Miller's Law of Insurance, which says insurance covers everything except what happens. Then there's the great first law of living. It says as soon as you start doing what you always wanted to be doing, you'll want to be doing something else. There's also Murphy's first law for wives. It goes like this. If you ask your husband to pick up five things at the store, and then you add one more as an afterthought, he will forget two of the first five. Or how about the grocery bag law? It says the candy bar that you plan to eat on the way home from the market is hidden at the bottom of the grocery bag. And then there is this one, Lampner's Law of Employment. When leaving work late, you will go unnoticed. When you leave work early, you will meet the boss in the parking lot. Well, let me add just one more to the list this morning that's greater than all of these and much more important. Let's call this one the special law of truth. Here it is. You can't bury truth. You can't bury truth. Uh, it may be expressed in other ways. You may, may have heard it in other ways. Some people say the truth will out, or the cover-up is worse than the crime. But to me, the most powerful and the most memorable way to state it is this. You can't bury truth. This is one of the clearest and most obvious laws in the universe, but it's also one of the most challenged laws. People are all the time thinking that they can bury truth. The husband who thinks he can bury his unfaithfulness. The employee who believes that she can hide her theft. The taxpayer who well, that one may be hitting a little too close to home at this time of year, right? But you just can't bury truth. Evolutionary science will tell you that they have buried Genesis 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But they haven't. Secular humanists will suggest that they have buried the need for church and religion, but the truth just won't be covered up. Relativism says you have your truth and I have my truth, and there's no absolute truth for, for everyone, and yet there is. It cannot be buried. Matthew chapter 27 is our text. Jesus has been crucified. His lifeless body has been taken down from the cross. It's been placed in a borrowed tomb. The tomb entrance has been covered and sealed. Jesus had said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And it appears now that truth has been buried, covered up, sealed in, never to be heard from again. Now consider a few verses with me in Matthew chapter 27, and then a few more in Matthew 28. But first in chapter 27, beginning in verse 62, it says this, the next day, that is, after the day of preparation, 
the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember how that imposter said while he was still alive, after three days I will rise. Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and, and tell the people he has risen from the dead. And the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard. Well, during his ministry, Jesus had repeatedly told his disciples in private teaching that after his death, he would rise from the dead on the third day. They didn't believe it, or at least they didn't understand it, not until later. Jesus' enemies, who come to Pilate here uh, with their request, may have heard what he said back in chapter 12 of Matthew, verses 38 through 40. Uh, they came to Jesus there and they asked him to perform some kind of sign for them, some, some wonder, some miracle. And he refused. And he said to them, an evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Maybe that's what Jesus' enemies remember now as they come before Pilate after his death and they ask for extra security at the tomb of Jesus just in case the disciples have a plan to steal his body from the tomb. Permission is granted for this guard of soldiers to be positioned at the tomb and, and they even place a seal on the tombstone that would clearly show if anyone tampered with it. I want you to think about this. It's sort of ironic here. And if you study it, uh, there is a lot of irony all throughout the story of the cross of Christ. But it's ironic here in their efforts to make sure that nothing happens at the tomb in their efforts, you might say, to, to fully and completely and once for all bury the truth, they make sure what happens the next day is all the more powerful and all the more believable. That's what happens when you try to bury the truth. That's why it cannot be done. Trying to bury it just makes the truth shine all the brighter and shout all the louder. Now, just one chapter later, Matthew chapter 28, Jesus has risen from the dead. He's come out of that tomb in glory just as he said he would. And the world has been changed forever. Eternity has changed. It's the most important event in the history of the universe. Christ has risen. Well, news begins to spread in Jerusalem about this. It, it spreads to the, to the unbelieving disciples, but also to the enemies. I want you to notice what happens, Matthew 28, beginning at verse 11. It says, Behold, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests all that had taken place. And when they had assembled with, with the elders and taken counsel, they gave a sufficient sum of money to the soldiers and said, Tell people, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. 
And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story has been spread among the Jews to this day. Maybe the most important word in that little reading occurs in verse 11. It's the word all. What was it that the, the tomb guards came and told the chief priests? What does Matthew say they came and told them? All. All that had happened. The full story, all the truth. And so we imagine that that includes an earthquake, an angel, a message from God, and an empty tomb. They told it all. They told the truth. And then the enemies of Jesus, hearing the truth, decided to try to do the impossible. Bury it. Cover it up. Change history with a lie. So they give these guards a lie to tell and enough money to convince them to tell it. They say, Say this, say that you fell asleep and somehow while you were asleep, you saw Jesus' disciples come and steal this body from the tomb. You notice that impossible lie? They supposedly were asleep, but they knew everything that happened. That's the kind of mess that people make when they try to bury the truth. You can't bury the truth. Not about Jesus. Not about the empty tomb. Not about anything. The truth will out. You might put truth in a tomb, but it won't stay there long. And you might lie about it, and try to cover it up all over again, but people will find out. I want you to note also that Matthew tells us in verse 15 that some people were still telling this same lie a few decades later when he wrote down his gospel account. He says, still being told. To this day. A few decades later, by that time, the church was growing all over the Greco Roman world. People were hearing the truth about the crucified and risen Jesus, and they were responding to that truth and, and obeying it in great numbers, and the world would never be the same again. In that world, there was a, a well-known Roman proverb in their language, Latin. It went like this, Magna est veritas et prevelabit. Translated, it says this, Great is the truth, and it will prevail. How true. Great is the truth, and it will prevail. You cannot bury truth. You can't cover it up. You might put it in a tomb, but it won't stay there for long. The truth will out in all things. Well, here's the truth, my friends. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. He took on human flesh. He became one of us. He lived a perfect example while on this earth. 
And even though he was completely innocent, he went and died a criminal's death upon a Roman cross. He died there. He was, he was then put in a tomb. And on the third day, he came out. He came out of that tomb by the power of God. He is risen. About 40 days later, Jesus ascended from this earth back to heaven where he is right now at the right hand of God. And as he went, he promised to come back in the same way. To come back one day to collect the righteous and to judge the unrighteous. One becomes righteous by following Jesus now, getting into Christ, obeying the gospel of Christ, repenting of sin, being baptized into Christ for forgiveness of sin, and living for him in faith. That is truth. One can ignore it. One can even call it a lie. One can hope God doesn't really take it all that seriously. One can live as if it never happened. But the truth cannot be buried. Jesus said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Be free today. Be blessed today. And be saved today. God bless you.